Welcome everyone, in this video I'll walk you through the ink bleed effect applied to a text layer. We're going to achieve this by using Adobe Photoshop and after this tutorial you're going to be able to create something like this. So with that being said, let's start. First things first, I'm going to start a new document in Adobe Photoshop. It's going to be 1080 by 1080 because I'm preparing this for a social media post. I'm just going to invert the background layer to be black. You can do that by using the command plus I shortcut. After that, I'm going to place this photo that I found on unsplash.com. I'm going to resize this, change the opacity to be 80%. Then I will add a gradient map adjustment layer. I'll be looking for a gradient preset that I like, and then I'm going to start adding text. Now for the text, I'm going to use the Helvetica a new font is going to be the bold weight i'm going to basically make it so that it fits within the canvas you can have a look at the character settings as well for the kerning i'm going to use the optical setting and then for the tracking i'm going to use minus 30. it's actually pretty common among designers to use these settings for this font once i'm happy with the text i'm going to start applying the ink bleed effect first we're going to start with adding gaussian blur we can do that by going to filter blur and then gaussian blur i'm going to have to convert this into a smart object and then choose the radius to be one pixel then we're going to go again to filter sharpen and then unsharp mask once we click on that we're going to make sure that the amount is turned all the way to 500 and then the radius all the way to the max as well while keeping the threshold to zero if we zoom in we can see the difference this is the after and this is before after before then i'll be adding the title as well i'm just gonna type in the word untouchable with the same font that i've selected before i'm just gonna make it bigger now i'm gonna have to do something that is kind of painful to do which is stretch the font i don't recommend doing this casually if we're not going to apply any other effect after that but for this video just trust me it's going to look nice after we apply the effect now for this title we're going to have to go to filter blur gallery and choose field blur it's going to ask us to convert into a smart object just choose that in this field blur window we can actually add pins to choose where we want to apply more blur or less blur we can actually move these pins and then sliding up and down we can choose the blur amount this gives you control over the parts of the text where you want to add blur we're going to have to go to filter sharpen and unsharp mask again here we're going to have the same settings amount and radius all the way to the max while keeping the threshold to zero i'll keep on making adjustments till i'm happy with the look i want to make changes to the gradient map as well i'm looking for something different i think that this one looks pretty good you can always double click on the blur gallery effect in the layers panel to make changes because this is a smart object we have the flexibility to make changes afterwards another thing that i like to add to the text is glow for that we're going to create a copy of the text layer we're going to go to filter blur and gaussian blur we're going to add some blur to it and then we're going to have to actually reduce the opacity of this one i'm going to group these two call them subtitle and then if we double click on the group we can actually go to color overlay we can check that and then we can select the color to apply to the whole text plus the glow. I'm going to do the same for the main title. I'm basically going to create a copy of the layer, then go to blur, Gaussian blur, add some Gaussian blur with a radius of 8.5 and then group this called the title. If we hold the key option and then drag and drop the color overlay effect from one group to the other, it's going to copy the settings to the second group. From this point on, I'm just going to keep on making small adjustments to the text. I'm going to play with the positioning. I'm going to double click on the text layer. I can double click on the smart object to just make changes to the text then when i'm closing the smart object tab i gotta make sure that i'm saving the changes so that they're going to occur then if we go to the field blur effect and we turn the bottom pins all the way to the max it's going to create this slide coming out of the text which is cool this is the kind of look i want to go for here i'm just going to fast forward the changes i'm making basically just making small adjustments things that can improve the overall design and this time i want to add some noise as well so basically i'm going to create a layer that's 50% gray i'm going to add some noise to it and after that i'm going to change the blend mode of this layer to be linear light which is going to result in this grainy look then for the texture i'm basically going to create another layer which is going to be 50% gray i'm going to go to filter gallery and then look for the note paper effect with these changes i'm going to save it and then i'm going to change the blend mode of that layer to multiply and i'm going to change the opacity to be around 20% so that the effect is more subtle after having another look at the design i'm just considering all the ways i can improve this first of all i would like to update the font at the bottom to something that's wide so that the title and the subtitle are going to have more contrast so for that i'm going to use the rock grotesque white medium font i'm going to make sure this fits within the box close this tab save it actually i think i want to choose the wide bold font make some changes to the positioning of this 
And then I was thinking about grouping the title and the subtitle under only one smart object layer. So for that, I'm going to remove the unnecessary color overlay effects by dragging the effect to this trash can icon. After that, I'm going to select the two groups. I'm going to convert them into a smart object. I'm going to rename this text. I'm going to make some changes to the name of the layers as well. And after that, what I would like to do is add a displacement map. For that, I'm going to go to filter, distort and displace. For the displacement map, I'm going to choose the values for the horizontal scale and vertical scale to be five. And then we got to import our PSD file, which is going to act as a displacement map for the text. I'm going to choose this photo that I got from my spot as well and now it's gonna look something like this when i zoom in i'm pretty happy with the result it just makes the text look a bit more grungy which is just improving the overall look what i like about this is that if we actually double click on the smart object named text and if we check the color overlay setting we can actually make adjustments to the color of the text which is going to change the color of the shadow as well which i think is pretty cool it's just giving it different vibes with different colors if we want to go for something more radioactive looking we can go with a bright green if we just want to go with something more mysterious we can select the red and i feel like it's looking pretty well with different colors that's pretty much it guys if you watched so far why not subscribe to the channel why not like this video as well that's going to help me a lot so if you consider this was helpful drop a like subscribe to the channel make sure you check out our other pages as well in the description of this video so yeah this was trey from creative society hope you guys have a great week